Do you remember when you were a little kid and you learned that Santa Claus wasn't real? Do you remember the sense of betrayal and disappointment and like your entire world had been shattered and your entire belief system was turned upside down? And then the horror to learn that it was your parents the whole time? Ah. Oh. I remember it very clearly. Well, today's video is going to be kind of like that. So just be prepared. I'm going to challenge a lot of your beliefs about everything you think is real. And we're going to replace it with a hopefully more realistic and more useful way of thinking about drum roll, please, romantic love. Ah. There's nothing quite like it, is there? Talk about your opioid of the masses. I think that Karl Marx had it all wrong. He was thinking that uh, religion was the opioid of the masses. But no, my friend, it is romantic love. There is no question about it. So let's, let's dig in. I was just thinking about the term romantic comedy, and I was thinking how redundant the word romantic and the word comedy should probably be synonymous with one another. We literally create in our minds this idea of romance. And it's something that I quite honestly believe is just a distraction. It's just like, um, you know, binging on TV or, um, you know, taking some kind of intoxicant, being drunk or getting high or any of those things. I think it basically is a well-traveled and time-honored way of distracting ourselves from the mundane existence of day-to-day -day life. And so we think that by involving some other human being in our lives, we can in some way enhance our daily experience. And it's an illusion, a delusion, I should say. We do literally delude ourselves into this belief. And we spend a lot of time, energy, money, psychology, so much on it. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying love isn't real. I'm not going there at all. No, I'm talking about that, that, that romantic love. When you look at someone and you get that starry-eyed experience and you get those warm fuzzies in your heart and you go, oh, she or he or whoever, that's the one for me. My life will be so much better if I just have that person, that other human being added to my life. And it all it comes with all these expectations, just like a good with Santa Claus, you know? You bring all these expectations to the table. You're gonna get all the stuff that you want. It's just gonna take this bumpy world that we exist in that has all these obstacles and you know valleys and it's a roller coaster, and it's gonna make everything so much better. And nothing can be further from the truth. In fact, it quite oftentimes is the opposite of that. Now I'm not saying that real love, like when you are, you know, um, you know, where you love your parents or where you love your children, and I think that maybe even a romantic love can evolve into a real love. Don't get me wrong, I think that that can actually happen. But a real love is more about the other person, while romantic love is more about you. Do you see what I mean? So love is a, is a giving thing, not a taking thing. But romantic love is all about taking. And that's why it's an illusion or a delusion. That's why it's a, um, a distraction, an opioid. It's something that we do like inhaling the smoke of a cigarette or marijuana or drinking an alcohol. We're just, we're just catching a buzz is basically what it is. And we get ourselves sucked into this experience well before we even know the other person oftentimes. It's that love at first sight, that that recognition of, oh, isn't she pretty? Um, wouldn't I love to add that person to my, my experience? And yeah, it's just, it's just a, del a delusion. It really is. So if you were interested in finding real love, well, you wouldn't use romantic love as a, uh, as a basis for it. You would have to start, quite honestly, with familiarity building into friendship. 
And it would be a non-physical thing to begin with. It would not start with a, a hookup, you know? So hookup, hookup culture has nothing to do with any kind of um, emotional attachment or any kind of love. It's all about um, fulfilling one's need for stimulus. You know, you're just, it's like being a, an adrenaline junkie. Um, but real love would start with some form of, of friendship and it would build over time. And relationships would take years to build into something that would be um, a romantic or a loving relationship. And, and the romance would come, you know, in a gradual, more um, authentic way, as opposed to as a form of seduction, which oftentimes is the case, you know, today. You know, I think that our society is so into instant gratification that we want to kind of get on with our lives. And so we find someone that we think is attractive and who checks a certain number of boxes, you know, they're smart enough or they make enough money or they live in the right place or they're from the right family or they've got the right bra size or whatever it might be. And um, we think, okay, that's the one. I'm gonna put together this plan and I'm gonna seduce this person. I'm gonna bring him or her or whoever into my life. And we are going to, um, we're gonna build a whole new life together. Well. Obviously, we're not doing very much due diligence. We spend more time, you know, considering what house to buy or what car to buy, and uh, than what we do with which person that we want to uh, spend the rest of our lives with. And I think that um, slowing this process down and turning it into a um, a more I'm tempted to use the word wholesome here because, but that has such a connotation. But, a more, but it is just a more wholesome way of approaching relationships. We can eliminate so much of the, of the crap that we see in our, um, our inter, uh, interrelationships you know, with divorces and breakups and um, all of the horrible things that happen in bad relationships. You know, Whenever uh, one spouse dies, nine times out of ten, <laughs> you know, you know what I'm going to say. The cops always come looking at the uh, the other spouse, saying, "Hmm, this is a suspicious death. I wonder what happened here." Um, but romantic love is something that we do to ourselves, and society has picked up on it, and so it reinforces this idea in our heads through media, you know, Disney, God bless them, you know, they plant these seeds in our children's minds at such an early age that there's this love at first sight and there's this Prince Charming and, you know, Cinderella and all this stuff and Beauty and the Beast and they're wonderful stories, but they are pure, pure fiction. And, um, but somehow these stories get planted in our subconscious and we think that somehow this is our destiny and this is what we're meant to do and this is the way life is supposed to be. And nothing could be further from the truth. This is all crap. And I am telling you from someone who has consumed a lot of this crap and only through the process of dismantling it and seeing it fall apart and doing a lot of self-analysis and trying to figure out how I got into this situation, have I come to the conclusion that Romantic love, or the idea of romantic love, in its current modern form, is got to be one of the single most destructive forces on the planet. It should be thought of as a pandemic, like in the same way that we think about COVID, and we should all be getting shots to stop it, because it's just out of control. There should be a law passed that says, you can't use the L word. You can't say the word love to someone you've met until you've known them for at least, say, two years, maybe longer. Maybe you need to go at least two years before you can even say that word. And before you can say it, you should probably have to pass some kind of a quiz or a test to see if you understand what the word means. Because I think that the vast majority of people throw that word around like... Um, and, and they have no idea what the connotation or what, what the actual definition of it is and how it's going to influence not only their lives, but the lives of the other person. And um, God knows I have done it myself and I, 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 I regret it. I, I, yeah, yeah I, I, I am guilty, okay? I am guilty of having done this 
more times than I can count. And most oftentimes, the only purpose of it was to um, seduce some poor girl into um, agreeing to something that she might not agree with under different circumstances. So I, I know how this game works. And um, yeah, that's why I think we need to pass some laws. We need to outlaw the word love until you've known someone for at least a couple years. That way, this love at first sight thing can just go away. And if Disney puts out another movie talking about it, um, we, can, uh, we can lock them up because I really do believe that romantic love is probably responsible for more pain and anguish than just about any other emotional experience um, known to man. So if you're in a relationship with someone new and you think you've convinced yourself that you are having some feelings for this person, ask yourself these questions first before you say that word. Number one, would you be willing to die for them? Number two, would you still love them if they moved on and were with someone else? Would you still love them if they did things that you didn't like? Now, they behaved in ways that you found objectionable. Um, would you still love them if they told you they did not love you at all? So you can start kind of running through these questions. You can kind of figure out whether you really, really love this person. Because what love means, from my perspective, or my, my definition of it, is, is that you're putting their needs ahead of yours. That the needs of the other are greater than the needs of yourself. And that's why it's such a rare thing. In romantic love, it's always the other way around. You're only really concerned about your needs. Now, if her needs um, fit in neatly with that, then that's even better. But if they don't, well, that's okay too, you know? Now, if she loves you and you love her, does that give you an excuse? No, because you could both be deluded. You both could be completely out of your mind. Yeah, you're both attracted to each other. You like fooling around. You know, you like each other's company. Yeah, you're good friends and you, you like having benefits. You know, I don't know why the whole friends with benefits label gets such a bad rap, because that's really what everybody wants more than anything. I mean, the whole idea of love, meaning like, yeah, I'm willing to sacrifice my entire life and well-being so that your life and well-being can be secured. Well, that just doesn't happen very often, you know? Now, I think that you can grow into that, you know? I think that it's very, very possible. You're, like, you're married, you've known them for 5, 10, 15 years, you've got a wonderful marriage. I mean, it's very, very rare, but it can happen. And then you think, you know, I would definitely put her needs ahead of my own. I would definitely sacrifice everything to make sure that she was taken care of. I think that those are possibilities. I'm not uh, opposed to that concept. I just don't think that it's going to happen quickly. You know, I, I just don't see it. And if you're with someone relatively new, say like you've met them within the last year and you're dating and you're fooling around, and you start having these thoughts, like you, you might need to see a therapist, okay? You probably are, are, are just talking yourself into that. More than anything, I am certain that romantic love is no more than a distraction. It's that you haven't applied enough of your own creativity and intellectual curiosity to your own life that you have now become bored. And because you are now bored with your day-to-day -day life, or you don't like the way it's going, maybe you've got a job that sucks, maybe you don't like your neighborhood, I don't know. But you've got something going on in your life where you've created sort of a shit show that, and you're not really happy with it. And you're thinking that by adding someone else to your personal shit show, you're gonna make it better. And I'm telling you, you're not. The only chance you have of meeting someone that you could fall in love with, that could legitimately be a loving partner, is one, you are the best person that you can possibly be. Like you have evolved as an intellectual being, as a spiritual being, as a um, emotional being, to a place where you are really flying high. You're doing great in your career because you just love doing what you do. You are financially secure because People who do great in their careers tend to earn a lot of money. They tend to do well in their lives. 
Not that money is definitely a measure, but when you combine the happiness with your career with um, a, uh, a lucrative living and you're, you have a nice you know, lifestyle, you know, you're comfortable in your lifestyle and you are happy, you're truly, sincerely happy with your life and there is no need for you to add another human being in order to enhance your happiness, that's when you're going to be okay or you're, you're ready to meet somebody. If you are not checking all those boxes, chances are you're just doing it to compensate for your lack of overall satisfaction and happiness in your own life. Thus, I call it the shit show. So if you're not hitting all those numbers, you're probably just trying to distract yourself with the next thing that comes along. You'd be better off just getting yourself a subscription to your favorite streaming service and making some popcorn and just sitting down and enjoying that. It's a lot less destructive, it'll cost you less money, and um, this can be just about as entertaining, quite honestly. So that's my, that's my take on romantic love. And for those of you guys who still believe in Santa Claus, I, I'm sorry to have ruined that for you. The Easter Bunny, he's a fake too. Um, but that doesn't mean that the spirit of, of Christmas isn't real, and it certainly doesn't mean that Easter isn't worth celebrating. It just means get real with it. You know, it's time to grow up. It's time to become an adult. It's time to start living your life with some level of responsibility for your experience. Um, all right, I hope you found this amusing, entertaining, educational, and perhaps even a little annoying. Thanks very much. Please like and subscribe. Please give me some comments. I love reading your comments. And uh, as usual, remember, stay healthy. And if you can, stay single.